Yeah. My name is Mario Di Dio. I'm the general manager of network at Nova Labs. And our website is uh, helloelium.com. How does Nova Labs envision a future of connectivity and what role does communication play in this vision? So, we at Nova Labs, we think that um, connectivity is, uh, especially wireless connectivity, is something that is at the center of human, <laughs> of human experience and also is at, at the time in which needs a, a big do-over, we call it. So, historically, uh, connectivity is something that we, we, we as a customer, we as subscribers, we receive as um, something that someone else creates for us. This is the first time in history in which now we get to a turning point in which the big companies, they usually the big telecommunication companies that are supposed to give connectivity to us, they're getting into uh, a space of um, limitation in their, in their ability to serve. That's where our approach, which is a people power network, comes in. So we believe in a future where connectivity is at the center and where community that creates connectivity helps bring in that, bring in that connectivity to the subscribers. So it becomes more of a, almost like a sharing economy. Imagine like the Uber and Airbnb and other, like it's very similar in the same way. You actually, you as an active member of the community within the Helium community, you contribute to the connectivity just like any other big companies will do until now. It's just that we're like a multiplicity of, of, of that. What, what are their unique challenges and opportunities in promoting the largest decentralized wireless network? So there, I think there are two challenges. Um, one is on uh, uh, the ability the, to enter the space. So the challenge is for us to create products both from the network building space and the subscriber, they use the network. They are easy to use and easy to easy to install. For example, you should be able to install our hotspot in less than five minutes. You should be able to join our service very quickly. So that is the first challenge is on us to make that barrier to entry as low as possible. On the other end, the other challenge is try to go to the traditional uh, telco operators, talk to them and have them join this vision. We do have a very good example that we're working on uh, with T-Mobile, which is our partner uh, in our healing mobile offering. And also we recently with Telefonica in Mexico with some of the announcements that we made down there. So there is these two challenges that, that we need that in bringing decentralization to the bigger stage. Looking ahead, what emerging communication trends do you anticipate will shift the way Nova Labs communicates with its audience? So when I look ahead, uh, I think that we have to expand this idea of community beyond our subscriber and, uh, and network installers and deployers. Right now, those are the, our community. I think that in the future, we will be able to speak to a wider audience. And what I mean with that is uh, communities made of hardware manufacturer, traditional service provider that join the, this type of network deployment, deployers, hosts, installers. So in the future ahead, I can see how this community expands and everybody has a role. And we as Nova Labs, hopefully we can be in the, the, the catalyst for that, for, uh, for, for that community to grow. You touched on this uh, just now earlier a little bit, but can you discuss some of uh, Nova Labs' key partnerships with the telecommunications sector and how are these partnerships driving innovation and growth? Absolutely. So here in the U.S., our Helium Mobile service is uh, uh, in partnership with T-Mobile, the largest 5G network, and um, um, that means that our subscribers in the U.S. they get both the coverage from T-Mobile as well as the coverage from the Helium network when they are in the vicinity within the coverage of a Helium Mobile hotspot. So that partnership is bringing this decentralized innovation right here in the U.S. in one you know one of the biggest carriers in the U.S. Um, Beyond U.S. in Mexico, we recently announced a partnership with Telefonica, which is one of the biggest operators in the entire world. Their local brand uh, in Mexico is called Movistar. And what we're doing with them is uh, augmenting their coverage in Mexico with decentralized, decentralized Healy Mobile Hotspot, which allows them to offer better services, and better user experience to their subscribers. Um, so in that sense, the innovation there was 
in places like Oaxaca, which is this like UNESCO site in Mexico, in which we are working together with Telefonica, it was very hard to deploy new coverage and to have the better user experience in terms of connectivity. Thanks to the Helium, the, the Helium deployer community, now we have coverage in Oaxaca and users that use that coverage, they experience superior user, user experience compared to just like the regular, their regular service. With the rapid evolution of technology and consumer preferences, how do you ensure that Nova Labs remains at the forefront of communication strategies to effectively engage the target audiences? Well, that's the, the beauty of having a community is exactly that. We are constantly engaged with our community. And what that keeps us always on our toes, for the, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way for us to, be, to stay true to our value, true to our mission to be able to speak to, th to those audience in a very connected way. So the fact that we are community-based, that we are people-powered, we, we, that's our edge to actually continue to serve our customers in the most effective and in the way that speaks the most to them. Um, the next whole question will ask a little bit more general, but you can feel free to tie them back to you know, however you see fit. Um, can you share your perspectives on the most significant developments in the blockchain space over the past year? Well, uh, I'm not a blockchain expert, so I, I, I can only say that it's um, our interaction with blockchain. Blockchain is, a, is a one of our theory engine of what we're doing in the Nova Labs and the Helium Network as a whole. And it's interesting to notice how uh, the amount of transaction that but actually, they're making Helium Mobile working and our Helium Network working is growing day over the day. And the fact that we have, we are, our layer one is Solana, and the fact that that chain is able to scale to that amount of transaction is something that I think we, we only saw in the last year as, a, as realizing under our, our own very eyes. And it's very, it's very interesting to see how the scalability, the interaction with the blockchain is getting better and better for the end user. I mean, every, to give you an idea, every one of our subscribers is an NFT on chain. There's an NFT that gets created for every subscriber, and that happens right when you sign up for service. Same thing with the hotspot. Every time you install a hotspot, there is an NFT that gets associated to a wallet, and that happens right there, right in. And we're, we're adding them in the order of hundreds a day, and it's pretty, pretty impressive. And all the accounting that goes into it, like when we account for traffic and the settlement, all that, there are smart contracts running on the chain. And, and I mean, as we grow, we have, you know, more than, I don't remember the right number, but like more than 80,000 subscribers right now. I think 90,000 signed up from the beginning and we have more than 12,000 hotspots out there. We're going to see like this number grow and, and blockchain behind this seems to actually keep up with that. Let me just add in there, Mario was talking about, you know, the blockchain, about how uh, we are seeing, um, like on the accounting, what he's referring to is that actually the blockchain, the algorithm is calculating. Correct, stuff. yeah. So Correct. that is separate, that's like run through and decided upon helium improvement um, proposals that the community puts out there, and then they vote on it, and then they decide um, how to, you know, adjust or augment or change the algorithm. Right. Um, so which which speaks to the, yet. which is not us, it speaks to the community part that we're talking about, like, we are pretty much in contact with the Helium community, which are the one in the driver's seat when it comes to any type of blockchain decision. There is this uh, process called Helium Improvement Proposal, which means that everybody in the, in the Helium uh, ecosystem has a voice to I improve their blockchain. And when that, when that gets up to a vote, everybody has the right one. And at that point, um, we as one of the service provider in the network, we implement, we help. Uh, with a uh, rollout of those of those hips, and the accounting that we're talking about is that this idea of like understanding how the blockchain is operating and how there is the amount of data that flows into the into the hotspots gets as a representation on chain. So that's what we call accounting. For that. How do you see the role of traditional finance institutions evolving with the rise of decentralized finance and traditional and, and blockchain technologies? Well. Um, I don't know if I can fully speak to that because I, I, it's, it's not a space that I'm necessarily closed in. But I, I think that it's pretty clear that there is some elements of the, the blockchain technology that's started to be adopted by big financial already from years. And I think there's a trend that is going to keep going. So from that perspective, I don't think there is a, uh, I don't think there is a takeover. It's actually more of an integration that it will continuously happen over time. What do you see as the biggest challenges facing the adoption of blockchain technologies and how do you think the industry can overcome them? 
go back to the same what I said is is easy, easy, easy. We need to make sure that we the barrier to entry to interact with this very complex yet beautiful tool that is the blockchain becomes as easy as possible. So I think we as an industry we have to push our engineering teams, our product teams, our marketing teams to try to simplify as much as possible the of the products that run on the blockchain so that you, you can always go down, deep down if you want, you can deep dive into, into the details, but in order to um, fuel the growth, we need to speak uh, as simple as language as possible to the, to the consumer base. How do you envision the future of Web3 and what impact do you think will have on the internet uh, as we know it? So for me, I, 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 I usually say that technology is successful but it's invisible, and I think that Right now, we're not quite there, meaning many places. We are in some places, but I think Web3, the moment it will become integrated in many of the services that people use on everyday life, starting from their banking to their to their connectivity, going to their file, you know, their um, storing of the files and cloud pictures, like there is all these Web3 amazing technologies. There's still there's still some level of um, say entry that needs to happen. The moment that we work on that, lower down the entry barrier, then the better, that the more invisible that technology will be, and that's where the success stories will be for Web3 applications.